This video will introduce you to TracePro and how to do a simple block and add surface and material properties. This is an introduction to the TracePro interface. TracePro is a standard Windows application. It's set up so that you have Windows menu items up at the top bar of the application, icons down below this, and finally a system tree on the left hand side which will contain all of your geometry, sources, and lid appearance information. And on the right side, a system view. In the bottom left hand corner of the system view is the XYZ global axis and in the middle is the 000 XYZ local axis. Down in the bottom right hand corner we have the status bar which shows us the XYZ position anywhere we put the cursor. If we left mouse click there's a static definition for the XYZ as well. At any time you can hit an F1 key to get help on any of the various sets of information in the program. Let's start with making a simple system. To do this, we're going to use our menu items. If we want to insert a primitive solid, say a block, cylinder, torus, sphere, or thin sheet, this is where we would go. We're using solids here, so when we specify the width of a block, it means how deep in terms of the X direction, which is into the page, as shown by the global coordinate system down here in the bottom left, how high the block is, and how long the block is. If we hit the Insert button at this point in time, that block will be created in the middle of the page. We can use the Orbit View capability to orbit around and see the block. Now, because things are solids in TracePro, if we click on the plus sign in front of the object in the system tree, we'll see all six surfaces as they're clicked on in the system tree. You can see these surfaces turning it on and off and highlighted in black as we go through them. By selecting each one of these surfaces we can then look at things like irradiance on each of the surfaces. We can also apply material properties and surface properties to the objects and to the surfaces. At this point in time we are going to just simply close the insert primitive solid and we're going to select the entire block. If we right click and go to the properties selection we can then apply properties in a manner that we need to define the system as in real life. So for instance if this block happens to be made out of plastic we can click on the material properties go to the catalogs and select from the down arrow plastic. Underneath name you can select the type of material for instance acrylic by clicking on this selection and then hitting the apply button. When we do this we now see that this material for this particular block is set as plastic acrylic. To specify each surface property separately we can then go to each different surface and I'm going to move the block over to the right here so we can select them. I can click on the select surface icon click on that particular surface and we see it both clicked on in the system tree as well as in the system view. And then we can click on the surface tab to paint this particular side with say white paint. So there is our diffuse white paint coming up here. If I click on that, hit apply, we can now see that this is a white Lambertian 99% reflectance type paint. If you click on the view data this will then bring up a spreadsheet that shows you that this particular surface is 99% reflecting and 1% scattering. Okay, all the rest of the five surfaces are just surface property none, which means that if light hits this particular surface, then light is going to completely just go through it. If it hits this top surface, what's going to happen is that light is going to then scatter off of it. Now I'm going to go to a YZ view at this point in time. I'm going to zoom out by hitting the zoom out button and I'm going to create a source. To do this I'm going to go to the left hand system tree, go to the bottom source tab and bring up the source information. We can see by default that TracePro creates a grid source. But it's turned off because it has an X in front of it. If I double left mouse click on it, it'll bring up the grid source dialog. At this point in time I can specify the size of my particular incoming beam of light. 
In this case, I'm going to make it about 2 millimeters in size. You're going to specify its origin to be up here, right at the point about 45 degrees away and about minus 15 in one direction and 15 in the other. So it starts off, hopefully, going downwards 45 degrees around the x-axis towards my particular surface. The reason why I'm doing this is that it's going to create a grid up above, and we can see it up here when we hit the Modify button, but it's going to come and it's going to hit both of these surfaces. Hopefully the top half, since we've set it to diffuse white, will then reflect the rays, and the bottom half will let the light go through. Let's ray trace now. To do that, I can go to the ray trace, trace rays, menu item, or I can just click on the icon at this point in time. At this point in time it says no sources to trace, which means that, oh, I didn't turn off the little red X mark there. Now I can turn it on with the green, and we can now write that by then clicking and seeing that particular output. Well, I've got the, uh, the scattering going on, the reflecting going on that I wanted, but unfortunately I did not get it uh, moved far enough back. I'm going to go back to my source now. I'm going to then move this over a little bit so that you can see it. And I'm going to move back this particular object to about minus 18. Hit the Modify button. That will now move that backwards. I'm going to turn off the particular menu item. Ah, it looks very close. So now I'm going to ray trace it again and turn the uh, rays right on. And there we go. So we can see what happens here. We've actually got something going on, but we really can't tell because the object is uh, a solid. Well, it's definitely a solid, but unfortunately it's not transparent. Let's make it transparent so that we can see inside. To do that, I'm going to select the block, go to the properties, go into color, and make it transparent. I'm going to hit apply here, and now we can see inside the different system. So exactly what we expect to happen is that half of the rays strike the surface, go through, and then are TIR'd at this particular surface, and then come through as we would expect. What are the blue rays? The blue rays are the Fresnel reflection on this particular material. On the top, we painted it with white. There's no Fresnel lens there. So therefore, all we're going to do is get these rays to scatter off from that particular surface, as a white diffuse paint would do. But over here, we expect the light will then enter and bend, which it does for the red rays. But the blue rays are the low flux rays. In Trace Pro, underneath the ray color capability, underneath the analysis menu, we can see that rays are flux based. If they're hot rays, between 0.666 and 100% of their starting value, they're colored red. If they drop below 33%, they're colored blue. So sure enough, those are our TIR, Fresnel, lost rays. And so they're going to happen in several different locations. Over here, they're going to come back and hit on this particular top, and then they're also going to bounce until they finally exit the particular block. Now, if you want to see what this looks like in terms of power, we can select this back surface and ask the program to show us an irradiance map. To do this, I'm going to swivel the system around. I'm going to take our surface select icon and click on it. Oh, this is surface number zero. If I now click on the irradiance map, I'm going to get the power per unit area on that particular surface. And that's what it looks like. These are our TIR rays, and there is our beam exiting the particular surface. We can see that that's exactly what's happening. We see the blue rays all the way around it. I'm going to now blow this back up again. You can see the small little amount of rays back here. Anywhere that you put the cursor, it will show you the XYZ location and the amount of power, and in this case, in photometric units for those rays striking that surface. If you trace more rays, you'll get a much nicer distribution. And you can see over here on the left, it has a scale of exactly how much lux is associated with each one of those rays. If you right click, you can go to Irradiance Options. And these Irradiance op or Options allow you to do things like look at a relief plot, which is a 3D plot. And I'm going to move this to the side so you can see that. And you can also hold the two mouse buttons down, the left and right, and you can actually rotate the 3D relief view. Getting out of the 3D relief view and then selecting the profile view, this program will now allow you to do a selection of wherever you put the cursor and click. You'll see both a horizontal in blue cross section and a green cross section of the vertical set of information. This ends our first tutorial, a quick run through through a Trace Pro system. Thank you for joining us and we'll be seeing you again in the next tutorial.
Thank you for attending our presentation. If you have further questions on TracePro, please email us at sales at lambdares.com or call us at 978-486-0766, extension 4. We look forward to having you watch our other videos coming soon.